Epictetus said, the chief task in life is simply this, to identify and separate matters so that I can clearly say to myself which are externals not under my control and which have to do with the choices I actually control. I think this is an apt definition of a core concept in Stoicism, which is the dichotomy of control. The dichotomy of control is actually a very simple concept and which is why it is immensely useful. It's also very easy to recall in daily life. The dichotomy of control is essentially this. It's identifying the factors in life or in a given circumstance or situation that are in your control, that you can affect yourself through your actions. And conversely, identifying the factors or areas that are not under your control. It is incredibly simple, but it is very useful. So why is this important in life? I mean, for one, it's more efficient, right? If we are spending our time, our precious time and our energy working on something or, or even just the, the things in life that matter to us, such as relationships or family life. You're more efficient when you are focusing on that which you can control and when you are not wasting time on things that you cannot control. I mean, I, I feel that this is very self-evident, but it's one that we can all bring into practice a little bit more. Um, we also become less attached to the outcome. Right? When you're more focused on the process, the things that you can control, once you've identified them, listed them, and when you work on them mindfully, you are in the process and you are less focused on the outcome. The other powerful effect of this is that knowing that there are certain things that you cannot control, knowing exactly what they are, leads you to a, a less attachment to the outcome because quite frankly you know that it might not go your way because of those external factors that you cannot control so it's important because it makes us more effective more efficient we're more efficient with our time and energy this way but we also become less emotionally susceptible to the ups and downs of life so how can we practice this like in real in real life. So one, one another way to think about the dichotomy of control is that it's simple risk assessment, right? It's, it's the same kind of risk assessment that you would do if you're undertaking some sort of project, some sort of entre entrepreneurial endeavor. You would work backwards from your desired outcome, right? This is what I want to achieve and here's how I have to get here. This is really, really most effectively done with a pen and paper um, to, to get a little bit creative with it and let your thoughts flow and have a record that you can go back and consult later. But it's about working backwards from the goal and then along that path, you can identify what are the things that are going to prevent this. And then you can begin to classify them, whether they're in your control or outside of your control. Ask yourself if, if there's proximity, right? If the, is this something that you can actually touch, that you can actually affect? I mean, sometimes these factors may be physically distant, in which case it is very difficult or impossible to work on them or to have any influence on those. So is it within your reach is another way to think about this. But Ultimately, a lot of the things that fall under the category of not in your control. So what are, what are things that are not in your control? Often you'll find that the things that are not in your control are not in your control today, but can be affected through tiny incremental actions, through positive habits, right? I mean, if, if, you have a, a large goal, maybe it's a, a long-term thing that you're working on. The things that you do today are not going to get you there uh, immediately, but it's the small things, the little every day, um, being healthy, right? Taking care of yourself, working hard, putting in the little extra mile without 
overdoing it, without overextending yourself. These are the things that build up incrementally and can actually mitigate the little risks and things that, yes, you cannot control them today, but through incremental actions, you can, you can influence them. So a final note on this is that, so I just spoke about how you can influence things out of your control and, and often the, the way is indirectly through um, striving to be incrementally better. But what's always in your control? There is something that's always in your control and that's your reaction to external events. Your emotional responses, if you will. How you react is always within your control and I think that this is perhaps the, the, the key takeaway from the dichotomy of control. Yes, process focus, risk assessment allows us to be more effective, but ultimately knowing that you always have control over your reactions and practicing this, because obviously it's easier said than done, really is perhaps the key benefit to the dichotomy of control. Mindfulness really helps with this. Mindfulness teaches us to observe and identify emotions as they arise that are caused by external circumstances or external events and just identify them rather than let them take root and let them control our behaviors. So for the, a common example of this is when something external makes you angry a trained, skillful response is to say to yourself, this is anger, rather than I'm angry, right? This is one example of how to frame a reaction to an event that is more controlled, more of a response. So remember, you always have control over your reactions. Let go a little bit of the outcome and working backwards from your goal assessing risk, planning to affect the things that you can control, and then the things that you cannot control, don't give in to despair. Instead, build habits of excellence and let small incremental progress take you along the path. So I hope you found this little video on the dichotomy of control helpful, and I'll see you next time.